add your text. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Generation Dan. Add your text here. Uh, <laughs> it's in the top left corner. Not I guess if you're ass. listening to this, it doesn't make any sense. Uh, <laughs> welcome to Generation Dan, where self-care is uh, burping loudly. It's, uh, that, uh, absolutely. That is a scientific <laughs> fact. That is something. John was making me laugh before he started. He's like, yeah, boy. It's like notifications yeah. on. And then, like Indiana Jones, every time I look at the timer, it has more time on it. He's like, I mean, metaphorically clock's fine <laughs> he's just going one after the other after the other uh, what's up john you're awesome buddy yeah. all right uh, well yeah so we were supposed to have landy hampton on uh because i so i screwed up last time when i was sick when she was supposed to be on then yesterday i booked too many things for myself and then i forgot to inform atlas that i had booked too many things after i'd specifically told them that i was only available when i had booked things yeah and then, then it was supposed to be now, to be now. and then now she's she's sick. she's violently sick which i'm yeah. like you know what i think we need to talk about self-care yeah uh and okay fun fact russia can fit texas more than 62 times jesus it's like that we were talking about those raccoons and people's anuses it's definitely, See, now, now i'm more. just thinking of like a texan meeting a russian right <laughs> yeah <laughs> oh is russia just a european texas possibly so. it's I a fair so. i feel hey we're both breathtaking that's what happens when you're over six foot the ladies don't know what to do <laughs> what's up walkie talkies are neat walkie talkies are neat i apologize we had consistently been scheduling stuff uh not late and i know that is your time to shine sir so welcome um yeah I have a Russian friend. So, okay, John, are they are they like tech, European Texans? Because that seems, I feel like Europe needs a Texas. I think everywhere needs a Texas. Uh, for Canada, it's Alberta. There okay, well, th well, think of it this way: it is a uh, very large amount of land, and yeah. uh, it's very barren, very yeah. uh, rough and tumble. Yeah, uh, you have people um, who like to kill things. Who like That's to kill fair. things like I, I feel like we're getting more and more similarities and be that being that it's the dad side of my family tree like <laughs> it's yeah everyone's dad's a little bit russian at some point that seems fair well no no no, no. i mean like like novak is is a uh, fucking like polish russian you know means See, like it, newcomer new guy something like that the hard part is that like I think we need to go back to empires, right? Where, like, because right now they're like, these are the made up lines that we've decided on. Nah you know? Whereas yeah. empires are like, no, this is mine, and I will have people kill you if you step on it. Britain meets Texas plus vodka. That's Texas as well. That's, yeah, that's Texas is Texas plus vodka. Oh, there you go. There, there's, an, there's another that. similarity. Uh, a, a lot of ties to one specific alcohol whiskey, <laughs> vodka. Like, it. Yeah, that's fair. Please, Please don't to get a red dawn in Canada. Canada. I feel like Vancouver has already fallen to the Asians. That's fair. That's that is a real thing. Um, which is ironic because your wife is Asian, meaning that you too have fallen to the even Asians. well, I have well, listen. So technically, so my wife is Chinese, but born in the UK and then came to Canada and then I married her. So technically I colonized myself. That is a legitimate that, thing. Yeah, that's that's like empire within empire within empire. Yeah. And, and I'm Greek, so it's like, ah, that's yeah. definitely, uh, I fell to the Romans and then, you know, and the, the UK. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's totally fine. That's I, That all makes sense. Actually, on that note, before we hit self-care, I was watching an interview uh, with Joe Rogan and uh, uh, Jimmy Carr. Jimmy Carr is uh, like a doctorate level intelligent person. Right, like he's written a lot of books. Like he likes the science of comedy and of things, mm -hmm. uh, and he, he like that's why he's so quick witted on stage. But he was saying how uh, Rome didn't fall; it became the church. And yeah, in, the English Empire didn't fall; it became the Bank of England. And you're like, fuck! And you're just like, going now. The U.S., the United States Empire, is not falling; it's becoming 
warmongers. Like that's it's become the warmonger of the entire world, technically. Mm-hmm. Which you're like, ah, they're the peacekeepers. Ha! Look at that. It's uh interesting how things Yeah, because like the, the whole like uh so you had the the Roman Empire and then the East and West, with the East being the Byzantines, right? Yeah. And they didn't call themselves that. We we call them that yeah. in, in hindsight. But then you have like the successor to the Roman Empire. So you have the Kievan Rus yeah. becoming the Russians because they were the Orthodox Church. You have mm-hmm. the Holy Holy Roman Empire calling themselves that. You have the Ottomans calling themselves the, the Roman Empire by the right of conquest because mm-hmm. they took over uh, Constantinople. Great. Like it, you have like mm-hmm. four or five different uh, cultures being like we're 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 the Roman Empire now, and it's like and now they are sure about that like. <laughs> The United States Crusades. We need to do Indiana Jones. I feel okay. So somebody was saying how the new Indiana Jones is so true to life because it's a ninety-year-old professor that isn't going to give up his tenure or his spot as a professor, which is the most realistic thing. Which I'm like, holy shit, that that burns like white fire in my veins. I love it. Um, it's one of those things where you're like, that's 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 the most realistic part about it is I, old people not willing to give up their spot. That's I get it. I was about to be like, "What fire in my veins?" is a really good like band name for my ongoing list of band names, and then I realized that's probably what like a KKK group of people no, called it. It originates from a uh, Wolverine comic book where uh, Lady Deathstrike cut herself with a blowfish knife, and then was like, "Ah, it burns like white fire in my veins," and I was like, "That is the most badass of lines I've ever heard." And it is always stuck in my crazy mind because I am nuts. Last, uh, uh, the, the last few I have on that list for people curious are Taser Napkin, Jimmy and the Demon, Nuggets on the Run, Fickle Edge, Molten Chocolate, and Flora and the Animals. There's many, Man, many those more. Those are if, great. Uh, those are top tier. Told you. Yeah, yeah. It, it's just one of those things like if I hear it in everyday life, I go, all right, I'm adding to this. And yeah. it's like almost never have I had someone be like, we need a name for my band, and then I'll be yeah. like, "Here, take one." one second, like it. Give me five of your favorite things. I'll get back to you. And just, yep, there you yeah. go. Yeah, that's, <laughs> I feel like that's just for fun. Need, you know, well, um, uh, there's a song called "Chop Suey" by somebody. Yes. Wait up. Yeah. No, 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 no. Yeah. Shake so it. apparently they were like, "Oh, we don't know what to put for lyrics for this specific area." He goes, "Okay, come here." They walked into like a library or a bookstore. He goes, pick a book, pick the book, open a page, open the page, pick a line, pick a line, read it out. That's the thing. And, and that's what he says. And apparently it just like magically works in sudden, insanely well. There's a whole thing about it, but uh, yeah, system of it down. There we go. Yeah. Lyrics. Okay. Wake up, um, uh, grab a butt, brush and put a little makeup, hide the scars just to fade away the shake up. Uh, why'd you leave the keys upon the table? Here you, <laughs> here you go. Create another fable. You wanted to grab a brush and put a little makeup you wanted to yeah it's it's complete nonsense it's it's (laughs) one specific thing where he's like something about his dad how about sensei steven seagal and the nunchucks that sounds like a movie like that was like the fault because there was like uh, above the law uh license to kill no license what is it uh what are the big there are are like three steven seagal movies where it was like just elbow breaking fury it was just everybody got their elbow broken and there was one with the rastas and then uh, I think it was that above the wall. I'm not sure. But Sensei Steven Seagal and the Nunchucks feels like his retirement movie. That's fine. And then, yeah. Uh, so self-care. Man. yeah. License to Kill. Under Siege. Oh, it's a great set of titties. In that Under movie. Siege. Was Under Siege the one where it's like the he's in like the, the tundra or something? It's no, that's no. when he's on the boat. Right. He's on the okay. boat. And Tommy Lee Jones is the bad guy. Gary Busey, also known as Nick Nolte to my wife. My wife can't tell the difference between Nick Nolte and Gary Busey, which is fair because most people can't because they both look psycho. Uh, And like they also look like they have uh, uh, putty for face, which is just hilarious. And then fake teeth, which you're like, (laughs) that's what money does to you. See, now when you say putty, I know you mean like silly putty. Yeah. I I think of like putty, the Fucking um, the, the guy. There. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, Speaking Patrick Warburton on Seinfeld. That that putty. Victoria says they look alike, like they don't, but they also do. In her defense, like 
yeah there's a lot of there's a lot of areas where people look alike and you're like they don't look alike like yes but no but but yes it's weird i had a similar thing where like uh i i have three students that kind of sort of look like each other and if they ever switch seats the like muscle memory of where i remember them like like i've I've done it like three times now and i feel awful (laughs) can i ask you a question what is the policy around nicknames for teachers how do like teachers giving nicknames to students because realistically there are some kids that you want to call like fart pants right and just like you know that's going to ruin his life for the next four years but i try i try not to my uh, because like okay when i was in middle school there was a kid whose last name was shire um my pe our pe teacher uh used to call him frodo because frodo is from the shire shire i'm not going to say his first name uh what you know is jewish as the name implies and short Ooh, and so like, he looked like Frodo. He looked like a baggage. Yeah, and like the, <laughs> the, 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 the teacher's excuse was, you know, Frodo is from the Shire. It's easier to remember that way. But you could just see the hurt on his face where he's like, he's really fucking oh, calling me a hobbit. Yeah. I am 12, good sir. Like, it, yeah, well, mm, and um, also 12. You're like, ah, oh, that is that is hobbit sized. Like, yeah, so there's like it, two people who are 12 that aren't hobbit sized. Everyone else is a hobbit. That's, yeah. And, 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 and usually, are the worst. Like, usually <laughs> it's the it, usually it's the girls because the girls grow earlier. Like in yeah. in middle school, they're just taller than the boys. Usually. I feel bad for some girls because like they end up being like sixteen feet tall in comparison, and then they're mm-hmm. like, nope, they were just like five six. And you're like, that's that's it. They weren't actually <laughs> tall, but everybody else is really short. And they're like, yeah. they look lanky and stuff. And you're just like, yeah, she's probably gonna be gorgeous. And then everyone's like, oh, you look weird. And she develops a complex. And you're like, that you know, kids are mean. Kids they are. are yeah. They are, but anyway. So six foot at twelve, Jesus Christ! I, six foot I didn't hit, so I was like five ten in grade seven. I think grade six, grade six, grade seven. I started kind of, and it was kind of like, like you know, when uh, I forget which show it was, where it's like, oh, Bart Simpson takes the the experimental medicine, and like half of him grows, and then the other half he's and turns into an yeah. over, like. That was grade six and grade seven was just like different parts were growing. Like all of a sudden I had size 12 feet and I was like, what the fuck happened to your feet? I'm like, I don't know. I can swim really fast now. I'm like a dolphin. It's great. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's uh, I was somewhere in the middle of the pack for most of it. And then yeah. like, I thought I was just going to be r- relatively short. And then like my gap year between high school and college, I went from like five, seven to six foot in that's a, a year. Well, that's a yeah. really late time too. Right. Yeah, but but it was like I I was you know somewhere in the middle, yeah. and then it was like oh shit, we forgot to give you the rest of your height. <laughs> Here you go, Bro. five ten five, six, six five six in grade eight, or five ten in grade six is you were a big kid because yeah. John you're like oh yeah four, my right? head was hu- was always huge too. Oh, I you think look that like was, a bobblehead. That's yeah hilarious. that that was the indication I think that I was going to be tall because this was always kind of this size. Um, I've told this story on the show before, but. When I was uh, on the golf team in uh, high school, they were like, you have to wear your hat. Otherwise, you can't play. And I was like, coach, my hat doesn't fit. And then he's like, nonsense. It's one size fit. It's definitely not. Okay, you don't have to wear it. Like, Just my head was too big. Yeah, Um, I understand that. Sorry, I'm looking up a picture because there was a show when I was growing up that was called um, The Smoggies. Okay. Smoggies. It's called the Smoggies. I'm going to show you a picture because the Smoggies sounds like the fucking uh, Mucinex boogers neighbors or something. It's very similar. So <laughs> this was essentially they were uh, the bad guys had like a boat and were polluting things, and the Smoggies were very very small people with gigantic heads. So this oh. is a picture of them. You know, the little ones are the small are the the good ones. The Smoggies are the three tall ones. But okay. the little people at one point they ended up there was something that polluted and their hair fell out and then their heads outweighed themselves so they couldn't balance because now they didn't have their giant hair it was the funniest shit ever and every time somebody has a big head i think about those guys who like got a haircut and then all of a sudden tipped over because they just couldn't bounce which is absolutely fucking hilarious same af (laughs) couldn't wear fucking hats all the whole time i'm sorry i'm sorry we keep getting off topic about no uh, but uh, it's all relative so like Listen, for myself, I just have mm-hmm. a, I don't have, I have a normal size head, but a giant face. So I'm like, people are like, oh, you got a big head. I was at Joey's uh, when we went live at, when I was in Ohio. 
and he was like, "Oh, you can fit in my hat." Put my his hat on my head, and it went down to here. And he was like, "What the fucking sorcery what is this?" Are you? Like, yeah, smoggies are the reason why Captain Planet turned evil. Those bastards were annoying. <laughs> That's fair. That is definitely fair. So, um, self care. Yeah, self care. So yeah. this weekend, I didn't get to go to my locals because the the store is uh, like they're running some some Pokemon thing that was taking up all the room and they're like, we can't do tournaments for two weeks. So this last week and this coming week, I won't get to. And like, I realized after (laughs) sometimes going off topic freely, self care. Um, (laughs) Everything is being labeled self care. It's fine. But yeah. So like after not getting to do that this weekend, I was like, God damn, I didn't like, I just had the blues going into like Sunday and all of Sunday and today. And I was like, fuck i i didn't realize how much like going to a local tournament for a card game was so important to my mental health then i was talking to a friend of mine who's in med school shout out emrys and was like hey you might have like a vitamin deficiency because you're on this keto diet (laughs) i was like oh yeah that could that that's a very real possibility i ate i ate a tangerine this morning just to like test it and Nope, still, still kind of bummed out. So it might be something else. Um, so there's, so I've been, I've been trying to learn a little bit more about this because only uh, later in life have I started to feel uh, more. Mm, what's the word for it? I guess impacted by my environment, and it's been weird because so like now that I've lost all the weight and everything like that, uh, like I start to realize how uh being overweight really does affect you emotionally with your your just a balanced perspective i guess what's it would you say um and also just like things i was going through and everything but it's like i finally have started feeling more like myself just with regards to what i do and how i do it and stuff like that but on the note of self-care it's like you start to realize things like how much what you consume affects you and like uh every every time i doom scroll before bed i do not have a good sleep and i wake up feeling like shit like i get really stupid like really not necessarily complex but really aggravating dreams like have you ever been in a dream where everything happens is like this would never like i would never allow this situation to happen and now for some reason i'm completely out of control and it's happening and like no one's listening to me and i can't do anything about it and it's extreme just just you wake up and you're like everyone is stupid this is bullshit like for no reason at all <laughs> kind of uh, uh, naps guys, are I'm 41 and naps are king uh, maybe we're just getting old um a little bit too a little bit too yes and no okay so like as an epileptic who's uh you know condition tends to manifest during sleep i'm very yeah. wary of like the nap as a concept yeah. um like anytime so like i used to love to nap on airplanes <laughs> and now i can't <laughs> teeth are turning into sand <laughs> something like something that, that. Yeah. Uh, yeah i i had a Russian really weird one Russian, more sand more sand more sand yeah that's right. I, I had a weird one over the weekend Th- this i think also was part of the reason that i was all bummed out was have you ever had a dream that like affected you so profoundly, but it wasn't necessarily negative, just weird? Yes. Yeah. So the, yeah. the dream was I was teaching and the, the kids that I was teaching were rapidly aging from teens to adults to, you know, grown people to middle aged to old people to dust to babies. And like this is over the course of like 10 minutes yeah. that they're doing that. Then apparently in real life, Katie said you, you were mumbling to yourself. Uh, I can't explain it any clearer than that because they were either getting or not getting the concept based on their age at the time. Um, so there was that. And then also uh, my principal came in to watch, but it was my principal, the assistant principal and one of the counselors heads on one body. And ah, like, yeah, yeah. So it was just That'll like such it. a weird dream. Yeah. Um, Novak, that sound like an, no, literally. Yes. The fucking movie old. Yeah. Uh, that's coming out on netflix like this week you know, yeah. for canada which i'm like i want to see it just because apparently like a brother and sister do it or something and you're like yeah 
Katie and I watched it. It's very, very odd. It's a weird movie. He's like the worst part was do you remember when he was in an interview? He was like, Oh, there's a perfect secret to movies. Spielberg knows it. Scorsese knows it, and now I know it. And then all of a sudden, his movies went to shit. And you're like, "What the fuck just happened?" I don't understand. You're like, "Yeah." Did you explain that there was a secret, and now you're not in the club? Yeah, sure. yeah. So, hmm. with all that in mind, I, I can't remember what the first part of that was. I, I was explaining weird like, dreams. Weird dreams. No, but before that, there was one thing before that that I'm forgetting. Um, teeth turning to sand. Oh, naps. Okay, yes, so naps. I. I used to love to like nap on planes, but now I just can't. Or I have to pull a flight attendant aside and be like, hi there. Um, just in case. <laughs> just in case. If something does happen, yeah. don't let, like, you don't need to land it's the cool. plane because yeah. of me. Just kind of be like stern and I will be like grumpy, but I'll listen to what you say. And. Just kind of let me know that I did. I'll, I'll probably figure it out after wake, waking up. But like, yeah, don't you get don't, sore and stuff like yeah, that? Yeah, right? don't don't call an ambulance. Don't fucking land the plane in you know uh, Albuquerque, like Des Moines, or something. Yeah, yeah, just just don't. Yeah, just, and, and then the not lowest, a big deal. Yeah. I'm ready for it. It's cool. Yeah, everything will be fine. Yeah. But like after you tell them that, they'll look at you like, "Are you fucking insane?" Yeah, like, <laughs> yeah. See, it's one of those things where you're like, "I need you." Like you also too, when you need help, you need to find someone who's also not a complete dipshit, right? Because when you say, "Hey, listen, I need to make you aware of a situation just in case," they immediately lose their mind, and you're like, "Oh no, no, no." This is not helpful. This is not helpful at all. I'm going to give you all the steps, everything you need. Everything's going to be fine. And they're just like, oh, I don't know if I can handle that. You're like, no, 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 no. Yeah. You're not handling anything. You're just following instructions. Just relax. Just calm the fuck down. And we're going to walk you through it. Right. And that's it's like you need you need like and that's the weird part is because that in my mind should be a manager. Right. Like that should be like the head flight of the, uh, of the flight crew or whatever is who you talk to. But yeah. now even managers aren't managers. They're just they're just people who got the job and they're like hey i got this job and you're like oh are you capable they're like no not at all and you're like oh yeah oh, okay, like thanks i know it's weird to in, like inherently it would be in, insane to be like have a good flight have a good flight nice to meet you have a good flight and then having someone pull you aside and then it's it, it's like the fucking it's always sunny pepe silva meme like where you're like okay so this is what happens if i have a say i get that it's weird i get it um but uh yeah, it, it's kind of like I don't feel right just either going to sleep like normal. Otherwise, I will bring a book and I will stay awake the entire flight. I feel um, like what you should do is instead tell them like, hey, listen, sometimes when I fall asleep, I turn into the Incredible Hulk. It's not a big deal. I will stay in my seat. You just got to be stern and say, hey, sir, you have to stay in your seat whether you're the Incredible Hulk or not. And I feel like that would be more understanding that instead you said, hey, I have epilepsy and I may go and have a seizure while I'm sleeping. Like they would be less freaked out, be like, oh, well, you're still technically a superhero. So you just get large. Somebody will be uncomfortable. No big deal. Like it's it's a more, it's more, it's so crazy that it's more palatable. Does that make any sense? Like, yeah. Which is and like insane, but that's nah, how we do it here. <laughs> yeah. Another thing about the self-care. whole self, the other thing about the whole self-care thing is like I'm I'm having a like consult with a doctor this week about um the possibility of surgery which uh i've avoided for most of this time because i i don't know have you ever heard of a dude named phineas gage yeah i don't know what, what is that from Who so he he was a uh like a railroad worker in the 1800s oh and, yes yes yeah so uh he was like packing a thing like a, a explodey thing it exploded and went like up through his eye socket and yeah. punctured part of his brain he was, he the one he that was, was never the same he was never the same yeah he he after that he became like you know, aggressive grumpy, angry, and, yeah, aggressive yeah. drank his, a lot his family yeah. didn't like like everything like kind of yeah he was just a different person all of a sudden and right? because this is like there's a difference between surgery and having an exploding rod go through your eye socket ish um <laughs> <laughs> a little bit. There's there's fine line. Introduction <laughs> surgery magnum dong is <laughs> if only. All right. He's been stuttering constantly. He's just gotta yeah. 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 So yeah. 
for the longest time, I, I was like avoiding this, but now I'm thinking, you know, getting older. Um, do it while you can. Do it while I can. And then also, like, yeah. if I, you know, decide if Katie and I have kids, it's like it takes a whole lot of like off our plate in regards to like, you know, staying up all night with the baby or like having your kid have to witness that, which I don't, I wouldn't wish on anybody. Yeah. Um, so like the self care of being able to, you know, maybe it's not a outright cure or anything, but yeah. I I was pushing that off to the side for so long, and now I'm starting to think, oh, maybe I I should at the very least have this consult with the doctor just to be like, all right, here are your options. Also, uh, too, you're at an age where you will be able to make a full recovery in any way, shape, or form, right? So if there are any setbacks you mm -hmm. can recover you're of an age that your body will you know work with you as opposed to when you're older and you're like maybe like that's that's the big thing like if you get knee replacement surgery it has to be old enough that it will outlast you but not so old that your recovery will be hindered right because like at the age of 65 you are more prone to fall down and stuff like that and if you have like knee replacement surgery and you fall mm -hmm. down on that you'll never walk properly again period like that's just you're done right yeah and also too you there's a lot of physio that you need to be doing on a daily basis to have the ease of movement when you have knee replacement surgery so if you're at a certain age you're not necessarily that active which is also an issue uh so you're like oh i'm gonna be not only do i have to work more than i ever have but also my body doesn't want to do that in general because i'm older and i don't want to do stuff right so like that's where i'm i'm at where it's like i've just started like the last few days started working out doing full workouts again so mm -hmm. like i'm gonna start doing my hanging videos and stuff like that just because I'm, like my my this shoulder has been hurting me i have like a like uh tinnitus or something in the in the rotator cuff which it's I, like I, isn't tinnitus the thing in your ear like tendinitis i don't know tendinitis, tendinitis sounds sure. yeah I don't know. Something with a T and itis. It's a titus. I have tits on my shoulder. And Christopher <laughs> Titus, if you ever want to come on this show. No. Uh, <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. No, but that's like one of those things. So I'm like, the if the more is it tendonitis. Yeah. Tendonitis. So tendonitis. the the essentially what's happening is is uh because I've lost all the weight and then I tend to sleep on my left shoulder uh just for digestion purposes it's like yeah and also too like it's just been uncomfortable but it's like every day that i work out it feels okay and the mm -hmm. more movement i do the better it feels but i gotta be uh yeah mr bleach mr beast come on i will totally mess with <laughs> you brain. i will find out if you're a murderer <laughs> i definitely think he's a murderer that's no Look, question there I'm, I'm just hoping for the day that i either get on the daily zeitgeist or behind the bastards they come on here or we get pat oswalt on here because he's my hero any Dino needs to post more on OnlyFans vids of him working out. That may be coming. That uh, and that makes two of us. Boom. Um, self care. That's fine. No, it's <laughs> but yeah, like that's the thing is like I had to take like two plus weeks. So I took two weeks off while I had COVID, and then the last two weeks have been me kind of like I started working at the Halloween haunt. Which uh, I don't know if you guys have seen pictures. I may have sent you guys, but that's me. We, at the yeah. Halloween haunt, and uh, it's uh, terrifying, but also too, it's like I feel like I found my calling because I'm still scary as hell and making people pee their pants. I made a couple guys poop, but they were older, so I don't know if they were primed to poop already. But there was definitely a oh I shit my pants kind of thing situation. So, which made me feel great as a human being in I general. Just love the uh, idea of like you hear the telltale fart or something yeah. and yes I, I pun definitely intended but uh <laughs> you're the telltale fart and you're just like yes like Bro, just hilariously so guys i have a bit where i talk about something that you learn as a fat guy right and because mm -hmm. atlas and i have had this argument many a times that atlas says uh, there are all sorts of people will shit their pants and i'm like no children shit their pants nobody else shits their pants like once you're an adult you're not allowed to shit your pants right now but I explained that the rationale, like what you learn, what I've learned and the knowledge I'm going to share to people is one thing, is that if you feel pressure at the top of your butthole, 90% of the time, it's a fart. If it's at the bottom of your butthole, 90% of the time, it's shit. 
And if it's in the middle, it's a 50 50 split. Like you just don't know to, you, if you're chancing it, you're chancing it. Now, he hilariously, 100% correct about that, by the way. So, S- hilariously, since, since he's pointed it out to me, I'm like, oh shit. I told At- exactly. I told yeah. Atlas, and he messaged me like in the middle of the night. I was like, holy shit, it's totally accurate. I'm like, I know. It's one of those things like, and also, you got to be ready, right? You got to be like, uh, is that the top? Uh, yeah, this is the top. I'm good. Okay. But, uh, it's never trust a fart, bro. So this is the thing. Never it's, trusting a fart. Self care. That's also <laughs> self care. Also self care. So I was telling that bit to the guys that I work with, and one guy was sitting there, and he had this look on his face of like he's a German guy, and he's playing a doctor, and he just screams at people in German. He's doing a great job. It's absolutely hilarious. Uh, shout out to Cody if you're out there. And um, so we're sitting there, and he has this look on his face, and he goes, he's like holy shit it's true and i'm like did you just fart he goes i just farted and i felt it like right at the top of my butthole i'm like i don't know how to explain it i'm just telling you that's the fact and you're like listen once you know that you're like you can operate with it's kind of like you always know the gun is loaded because you're like hey checked oh top of the butthole it's just a fart we're good no problem it's just one of those things i have to okay so he comes out and he yells at people in german and he just yeah. comes out so just to- it's Einstein Stalingrad and just <laughs> bro it could be anything people the funny thing is he's a very good looking guy he, like it's it's very funny because like so I'm 62 and when I'm wearing because I'm wearing uh like a pair of like uh fancy hiking boots so that Victoria got me cuz they're like waterproof but also breathable in some sort of magical witchcraft shoes I don't know but so wearing them I'm like a brown i'm around six three wearing them right if you're if you're sitting is the top now the bottom of the butthole asking for a friend nope still the top is the top it's still it's definitely still like maybe it would be the rear the rear of your butthole versus the front of your butthole that's how you would yeah because it would tuck under it right so if the bottom if the front of your butthole when you're sitting down you feel pressure there probably poop okay just think of it like like uh you know how you have like a uh, stage left stage right uh-huh. so just think of that but like you know you standing that's stage top stage bottom of butthole exactly um <laughs> so uh yeah the funny thing is so i'm six three kyle who's been on the show is six six so right now me and kyle are in and around the same weight so like if i haven't eaten and i have pooped he might outweigh me because if he's eaten and hasn't pooped, right? Like, is that that's the rationale? Like, we're all like, we're kind of neck and neck in that area. But the funny thing is, people are like, oh, he's the big one. And I'm like, this is the weirdest experience because I've never not been the bigger person, which is hilarious. I misunderstood the assignment and there's poop on my ceiling. <laughs> and like, that will happen the first few times. That's, that's, that's definitely a thing where, like, when you're used to being huge and then you. Yeah just meet somebody who's like that's probably what's going to happen at my wedding because i'll be meeting you irl for the first time yeah um it's going to be weird it, yeah. it's it's you're going to see me and you're like you're a tall person i'm like I, mm. yeah. and it's it's so There's... like other guys that were that are working the haunt are like five eleven, six foot and they walk up to me and kyle talking and they're all like how um I'm usually the big guy, and I'm like, yeah, man, we're all huge. It's not. It's just. And then, and then they ask you how tall you are, and that's when you say five nine and watch them pan. Bro, <laughs> I have never tried that because I'm like, I have this weird thing where I'm like, I can co- completely fabricate an entire existence. That's an easy thing for me, mm-hmm. but at the same time, like, it doesn't come to like just to totally fuck with people. Like the idea of saying, oh, I'm five nine. I can't like that. Never like you've said it, and I'm like, I so am dying just pull that on somebody because like throughout the entire haunt i'll look at people and i'm like oh you're little that means you're delicious and they're just like "Ah," and run away which is great um and then like i i point at little kids i'm like the little ones are the tasty because they're so bendy and they just go like get me the hell out of here it's very enjoyable um i've also made a few women definitely pee their pants a lady asked me for a number that was a weird experience because then I'm like, you're very promiscuous. And she was like, oh. <laughs> this is especially going to be interesting because uh, one of my groomsmen is yeah. like 6'2". Yeah. He's like visibly taller than me. Okay. Shout out Dan. 
Um, not the Dan that the podcast name comes from. That that's incidental. Maybe who knows? Dan, in regards to this podcast, is an acronym. Yeah. Um, that but, no longer uh, applies. But still. That no longer applies. But who cares? That's okay. Um. So I, I'm I'm curious to see like because it it was just the sort of thing with him and I were. I just know he's taller than me. I don't know how much taller than me he right. is. So okay. Yes, we'll see. Fair. Um, and then, yeah, I think off the top of my head, that's the only person who's like visibly huge. Yeah. Um, well, that's the thing is like even now, people are like, I'm like, I'm six two, and people are like, No, you're not. You're definitely six three. And I'm like, I'm not six three. They're like, You're definitely six three. And I'm like, mm, I don't think you're so. Like and it's like it was like I'm shorter than you think I am. <laughs> Well, that's the weird thing is because I'm like, also, like, I stand straighter and I generations Dino and Novak. There you no, go. No, no, it's like, okay, so uh, our original third co host was named Nick. Yeah. So Dan comes from Dino Atlas and, Nick. and the non existent Nick. Yeah. Um, and then I remember when we were like trying to think of a, a name, we were like, what if what happens if someone leaves? And we're like, it's not going to happen. Cut to that <laughs> happening. Three times total over the course of the show. <laughs> yeah. And then, like, when, when we first got Caleb, we were like, do we change the name? We're like, yeah, fuck it. And then yeah. it's fine. Well, yeah, because Generation DAC does not sound proper. Yeah. <laughs> so nor, nor does Generation DAC again, because that's another C name. Um, <laughs> so, fuck it. It's Dan. Who cares? Oh, fun times. But, yeah. So, that's, a, like, it's weird because, like, I even like in my maze, because uh, I, I have like a specific area where I freak people the fuck out, and people will come in there, and I'm like hunched over and like just leaning on stuff, but then they start to get closer, and they're like, "You're big," and I'm like, "Yeah, and you're small," and it's like I'll have guys who are taller than me, but they're like lanky guys, and they're just like, "Nope, no, 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 no." And I'm just like, you're taller. What's the big deal? Like, it's very weird. I have to tell people all the time, your opinion of me doesn't invalidate my factual line. Also, that's true. That's true. That's fair. I mean, yeah. The, I, I have students who are taller than me. That's definitely uh, interesting. For real. Yeah. So I, at the age of, hold on, you're, are you 30? You're 30. 29. I mean, you're 29. I'll, you're, I'll be 30 in February. You'll be 30 in February. Yeah. So, like, you're just starting to get stronger as like just as a man it's a weird so in the next five years you're going to start to get stronger and go i don't remember being that strong but it's just like a man thing like where you just hmm. get stronger um and like and it kind of it kind of peaks around uh early 40s where you just start to like oh no i'm a man i know how much adrenaline like it's kind of like your body's like oh adrenaline wasn't a button it's a knob we can just crank oh. that shit up like it's a weird thing but like you start to have it like you don't realize like especially for myself like my parents instilled this whole idea of don't touch anyone don't touch anyone and that has resulted in a complex where i'm like i don't like hugging people i don't like touching people i'm like people high five and i'm like don't touch me just get the fuck away from me you know like i shake hands that's what i do um and uh so i'm guessing physical touch is the lowest thing on your uh fucking absolutely uh, like non-existent yeah. like i just where like and people hug me and i'm like just please don't touch me it's just fucking weird right i'm like what are you trying to get from me right like what do you want emotions go fuck yourself right so i, I gotta say one of the best things about like being the, a hippie no, or <laughs> being raised by hippies but also like <laughs> the idea of um getting older learning new words uh yeah. society in general trying to learn about itself more true is that uh, you have more ways to express opinions and like your yeah. views of the world and stuff like like the whole fucking hierarchy like love languages right where that yeah. that just sounds like, stupid on paper but like it's so yes. nice to be able to express like how you feel good in a relationship like gift True. giving is the fucking bottom for me. Um, and Katie knows that. Yeah. See, that's I, I like it's weird because it's one of those things where like it's I think it's important to know learn about yourself, but like my, like for me, like one of the big things is people just doing what they're supposed to do as good as I know that they can do it. Like when they give 
top tier effort to because I know that I do top tier effort all the time. If that's what that's my MO. If I don't if I'm not giving top tier effort, I'm not involved. I don't I don't chime in, right? And that's why people are like, hey, how come you aren't, you know, jumping in the conversation? I'm like, I have nothing to add. That's yeah. I'm not, you know. And like that's like like yesterday, interestingly enough. So yesterday, kind of like I was just over whelmed and i am like because i had like three things to do over the course of the day and i'm like that's too many things i'm not okay there's too many things i don't like too many things like right now i add one thing i have a doctor's appointment at 4 p.m i can't go to breakfast at 10 that's it absolutely i can eat (laughs) breakfast at home in the comfort of my underwear that's it i cannot i can't go out and have an event like that's it's just too many things yeah um oh and which is wondering what the rest of the love languages are so acts of service quality time words of affirmation physical touch receiving gifts those are the five yeah i don't know how to respond to people giving me things Mm -hmm. or uh like like victoria likes likes buying stuff and giving it to people which i'm like that's fantastic because i hate i just give people cash and that's yeah and instead like that's like every time that i bought victoria a gift she has exchanged it and or uh forced me to give more money because she wanted to upgrade it and i'm like how about this here's money do whatever you want that's yeah. that's it and uh and then after a while i was like you know what i don't have a job i'm not giving you shit how about that suck it <laughs> and so uh which she's been very kind about and understanding but at the same time well, it's good. it's one of those things where you're like hey i just six being called a good boy unironically so that would fall under words of affirmation my dude um it's one of those listen like when somebody says good boy, you're like, number one, I'm a man. Number two, I'm not good. I'm I'm chaotic. I say this in complete earnestness. What percentage of our listener base are dogs? <laughs> I don't like compliments. I'll say thank you, but it's odd. I mean, like very odd. Yes. Yeah, I I get it. I I think if I if I had to put this in order i think um i think it's uh words physical touch service quality time gifts yeah what's up zaragoza how are you sir wolf <laughs> zero gonna zero this or is it zaru how do you pronounce it zero. i've been saying zaru this entire time it mm-hmm. works Spell it out phonetically. That way we can all be a little smarter. See, this is the thing is when you're dealing with people like I'm I like it when people are so this is gonna sound ridiculous now that I'm thinking about how to piece it together. It's like when it's like if I lift up the side of a car, people go, Wow, you're really impressively strong. I'm like, thank you. Yes, I am. That is factual, you know. Uh, but also like I eat seven uh subway sandwiches at one sitting, and people go, Wow, man, you have quite the opposite. I'm like, Yes, that's true. I can eat an entire cow, it's amazing right like it's it's not it's 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 this weird dichotomy of i need recognition but also like as a form of praise for what i do so like you normally do in your regular everyday spelling of uh zaragoza that's fair that's very neutral vowels. okay so amazing zaru very is neutral vowels. there you go okay whatever fuck it, it uh, it's zaru um <laughs> uh, hey listen what matters is we're all talking about self-care and that's the important part yeah. but let's like like that's the thing is like it's a good thing but at the same time people are getting kind of wrapped up in it like i found that the the hard part about knowledge or learning about oneself is more so how you kind of get bogged down in all the details right and like let me try and explain is the idea where you're like listen you should be okay to care for yourself to take that time you need like hey if you cancel plans you cancel plans now if you're constantly cancel plans which i have a friend who does that constantly dino sounds like we are cats love me but only on my terms that's 100 percent accurate um i'm like some sort of hybrid wolf uh wolf man like cat man i'm cat man like i'm i'm very dangerous and giant size but also I wish I was touched. Don't you fucking think about touching me. How dare you? Like, it's very uh, that way. But so it's like, it's that weird thing where at some point I feel like self care, like you, you, it has to have like a scheduled time of the day 
where Victoria says you are the giant cat from the cartoon. Okay. Atlas, you're probably going to enjoy this cartoon. There's a on YouTube. Yeah. Just for everybody. There is like uh, they're 20 minute episodes. It's called um, the masterful cat is depressed again today. Okay. The masterful cat is depressed again today. And it is um, the funniest, crazy cockamamie shit you've ever watched. But also, too, you're like, this makes complete sense. I feel like this is the future. Like, it's just, it's a weird, it's a girl who is completely overwhelmed by her existence. However, she adopts a stray cat and the stray cat grows to like bigger than human size and uh, does all her house cleaning and cooking. And like, he, it, the cat who's uh, Yakuje is, um, the master of all cats it's the weirdest like he's almost like the cat god it's it's insane but also you watch it and you're like ah, i need a cat like that this guy's so, awesome, right? so clifford the big red dog but a cat like... uh but but useful like does all the house chores <laughs> cooks like and also cooks like like michelin star level meals for her to bring to work so all of her co-workers are like wow how do you do that she's like I don't I don't know how to do that. And they're like, who does it? He's like the, the like, eldritch horror that yeah. that uh that lives in my house. It's absolutely <laughs> magical. And but also too, like the cat doesn't really talk, but also like has like this giant uh uh Clifford Clifford is an agent of chaos. I'm a hundred percent. That's a good Clifford is absolutely insane. Like when you read the Clifford books and like as an adult, you look back, you're like, Oh, get fucked. Like, there's no way. That I would allow that to like, to, like, like curious, it's, George. It's, yeah. yeah. Or well, Amelia Bedelia. Amelia feel, Bedelia was fucking horrifying. I don't even know who that is. But Curious George, number one, I feel like Curious George was peak monkey, right? Like he was the monkeyest of monkeys. Was he a monkey? He was a monkey. Yeah. Ape, him, yeah, sure. I, I whatever. Think he had a tail. I can't remember. Prime, okay, no, so, he doesn't. No, Mandela, no. he doesn't have a tail. Okay. All right. Hot, so oh. he might might be some kind of ape or uh, yeah. chimp. So Amelia Bedelia was, uh, it was these children's books about a girl and she would take everything literally. So oh. the, the, the whole like shtick was like, you know, she works for this family and they're like, dress the turkey. And then she puts like actual clothes on this turkey, like shit like that, you know? Um, that is actually hilarious, but also. Yeah, I mean, it, they're kids books, you know? Yeah, well. Like, Katie had got a, uh, a, the office children's book. For her classroom and it's like about dunder mifflin but it's like a kindergarten classroom and it's like i want to read this thing because yeah, i have to right that seems insane i would also... also love to okay so i i recently uh re-watched uh breaking bad and, oh, right. and like and then of course the algorithm was like oh you've rewatched breaking bad check out all this you know stuff As well. so i saw one where it was a uh, breaking bad but the south park intro where it's like come on going down to abq and I'm like you know <laughs> hiding um, from the dea <laughs> slinging crystal like just stupid it, it fun stupid but stupid and i i just love crossover shit like that it it it, it brings me happiness listen just sorry uh also uh just so you understand so do you remember when cartman sang the uh math has got me working song no no okay so it was like uh something you would hear on a farm where they grow cotton okay it's, okay that kind of a song <laughs> and uh it's it's extremely uh uh, uh mm, not appropriate i so, remember them doing california love but it's about homeless people right well, this one is, it's, uh, uh, Matthew got me working, someday he get, Matthew gonna set me free, and you're like, holy oh, yeah. shit, yeah, it's extremely Carmen bad. Wood. Yeah, Carmen yeah. Wood, exactly. Yeah. Amelia Bedelia would have been good for me coming from a non-native, it was, oh, oh. yeah, that's true. Yeah, maybe. That's I didn't true. even think about that from a, like... You gotta watch the Archer episode where he's on the boat, the pirate boat, and he's like, yeah, you can't translate, um... Uh, oh, it, I can't do idioms. Yeah, yeah. idioms don't yeah. translate, and you're like, ah, yeah. shit. Like, yeah. Half of the language is idioms. That's, yeah. that's true. so. Here, I, I I put it in the 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 chat. Um, let's see here. Would have been good. It's like a little. Yeah. What do you want me to do? You want me to put it in the thing? It, oh, put it in the comments. 
Oh, uh, can you put it in the comments? I'm not sure. I, no, I think with the comments, there now. Okay. So, uh, but the funny thing was, like, we were working at the Halloween haunt. So, uh, I was like, darkness got me working. Evil's going to set me free. And Kyle <laughs> just about died because he was like, that is so inappropriate. I love it. I'm like, yeah, that's what I do. I'm Gary in moment. Oh, totally. That's, that's it. It's one of those things where you're like, I'm especially Gary English moment. is a horrible language when it comes to uh, what it has become, right? Like, English it's like, is it, very... it's like six different languages in a trench coat. Uh, a trench coat made of a quilt, like it's absolutely you're just like none of this makes any sense, and it's all backwards and upside down. Well, because so. you got okay, you have the uh, yeah. Arabic and Indian numbers, you have uh, Latin for a lot of the root words. Mm. Um, it's a Germanic language, technically. You mm -hmm. have because of Latin, you then have French, Spanish, Portuguese, uh, all mm. like contributing. To it. like, look at all this. Yeah. I, I that that's already six different yeah. languages. That and and also, like too, you have the derivation of like in Europe. If you know ancient Greek and Latin, you can almost communicate in every language. Like there, because it, it's a hodgepodge of both of those languages, right? Mm -hmm. And like, it wasn't until like they were teaching ancient Greek in schools up until the eighties. Like that. Like my dad, when he went to school, it was in ancient Greek. Like that's how they did things, right? So and then like I, we, I took Latin in high school. Like, yeah. So and, it's like and then you're like, oh, let's be honest. You know, we know lots of people who speak Canadian. on Oh, that's also true. That's also there's a guy on TikTok who does it. And you're like, someone's like, hey, can you just do an entire TikTok in, in Canadian? And he's just like, yeah, buddy. And you're like, <laughs> just goes off and you're like, yep, I understood every word of that. And they're like, shit. It's just one of those things where you're like, yeah, it's just backwards. Don't forget Latin alphabet. Latin alphabet Jesus. Yeah. How many characters are in the Latin alphabet? I think it's something or? like 24. Greek is 24. But there um, are a lot of letters um, that are two sounds. Like, yeah. Um, like, like you have, um, what's it called? Like where you have kappa for the hard C sound. 23 yep. letters. 21 there's, of which. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there's um, no there's no C in Greek. Is only a K, yeah. right? Yeah. So, but there's a K, which is K S, and you're like, this is so yeah. Yeah. psi, and then also psi, like P S I. Yeah, psi. Uh, yeah. yeah, it's okay. that's the, the weird part is too that like people are like, oh, uh, delta. You're like, no, that's not a word. It's delta. There's no delta, and like gamma is a gamma, not gamma. Go fuck yeah. yourself. So like, in beta, you know, beta is beta. You're like a B is a V sound in Greek. You're like, that's not even accurate. It's not the big thing. So according to uh, Britannica.com, the classic Latin, classical Latin alphabet consisted of 23 letters, 21 of which were derived from the Etruscan alphabet. In medieval times, the letter I was differentiated into I and J and V into U, V and W, producing an alphabet equivalent to that of modern English with 26 letters. So yeah, it's, it's like a fucking nightmare. It is yeah. insane. Well, that's why. And you're like, that's the, the funny part yeah. is when people are like, listen, if somebody knows another language, there's a very good chance that they're way more intelligent in that language than they are in English, which you're like, mm -hmm. yeah, because English is completely fucking backwards and upside down. Right. So Latin influences and French influences are often considered to be separated influences, mm -hmm. not in English. Get fucked all of us. That's what is basically. <laughs> See, that's the weird thing is like I I've been trying to learn new things as a form of self-care. Uh, which like I always keep uh, my copy of this book, which is the I told the story about how I uh, so it's uh, Lucretius, Epictetus, Marcus Aurelius, and uh, Plotinus, uh, all their books in here. Which I'm trying to get through Marcus Aurelius because I think it's very enjoyable, but just as a form of of learning and expanding my mind because. I think I'm going to be more. Also, the same reason why I've been doing handfuls of mushrooms regularly. Also, because <laughs> I'm like, see, this is the thing. I realize uh, in the great uh, uh, in the great words of Taylor Swift, it's me. I'm the problem. It's me. I get it. It's fine. It's and I'm like, if I want to get breakthrough to the next level, I have to. I have to overcome the self. And that, like, I find that at this point in my life, that is the biggest form of self care that I can be experiencing is conquering my own poor nature right been listening to a lot of episodes listen it's it's harsh 
but it's not wrong. And that's that's one of those things that I really embraced when I was a teen and in my early 20s. Uh, <laughs> anyway, I'll have to buy some Hefe sexy products. I, I'm not JK. Oh, okay. No. But of course. <laughs> that's the thing is like when I was younger, people were like, you're too harsh. You're too harsh. You're too harsh. And I'm like, no, 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 no. I am the right amount of harsh. You guys aren't harsh enough because a lot of what we realize now is like people strive and grasp for comforts to comfort oneself. And you're like, yeah, comfort is what defeats you. Your discomfort is what makes you grow as a human being, which sounds insane, right? But it's the same idea where uh, I heard the explanation for like working out or running or which running is horrible. So let's mix that. Just say working out physical activity. This is how city sucks at the time, but makes you feel great afterward. Whereas drugs make you feel great at the time and horrible afterward. So that's one of the things where you're like, you have to, uh, it, like there, there's no truer words than no pain, no gain, right? Like it's one of those things where you don't really realize how important a certain amount of suffering is in your existence as a form of self-care. Uh, Speaking of Yefe, it turns out she's actually a real person. Damn! I didn't know that. I'm, I a, I'm a vanilla pervert, so I don't know what that is. Sorry, there it goes. That's out. going on my band name list. <laughs> vanilla, vanilla pervert? Vanilla pervert. Yeah, no, that's fine. Uncanny self of her is vanilla. actually just a person with a beauty filter. Yeah, well, listen, there are a few countries. That's the other thing, is that people have started filtering everything. And uh, that is really bad for you. It's bad for your entire existence. Like <sighs> being able to see yourself like that idea. Like I remember dealing with this when I was really young was like the idea of looking in the mirror of your existence where you're like, that's a hard thing to see yourself accurately because nobody wants to see their flaws. Right. Right. And then people, especially we're living in an age where people are like, I'm living my best life on the streets but it's the idea is that you're like there are there's a certain degree of where you're like are you living your best life or are you living your impulsive best which I, at some point yeah i get it but that's one of those things where you're going you know what taking time for yourself like it, it, the one thing like you know how people are like take 10 percent of your paycheck and, and save it and i'm like listen how many times for ourselves at the end of the day, we're like, okay, now I got to go work out or now I got to read this thing that I'm trying to get through. And now I got to do this stuff. And you're like, that's backwards. Like you've spent all of your energy, all of your mental power, all of your will on other people and other things. When you're like, what you really need to do is wake up early and save that 10% for yourself before anyone is up. You read that book, you do that workout, you do that preparation for your meals. You do all that stuff that only or just take you. a damn second, you know? Like sit in your can. kitchen with a cup of coffee and like drink the morning, <laughs> oh, whatever. Absolutely. Like, um, and now I'm thinking like fucking every morning by Sugar Ray just got a whole lot like deeper. <laughs> you know, you don't like that's the thing is for so long, our worlds were molded by the uh, uh, lyrics of, of song, right? Mm -hmm. Poetry, stories, music. That's how we transfer knowledge because think about it. Like, I'll tell you this. It's hilarious is that I have trouble remembering the order of the letters for the Greek alphabet going forward, but I can say it backwards because it's a little song. It's also a little song going forward. That's how I learned it. Not in Greek. <laughs> Alpha, beta, gamma, delta, epsilon. No, no, no. But going backwards, opsi, fichito, siropi, oxini, melica, ithize, delta, gavia. And you were like, what? It, what? Oh shit! And I'm like, yeah, like it's it's an abbreviation, and it, it, like it doesn't technically work, but once you piece it together, it's like, yeah, it's a poorly spelt derivation of those words. But so it makes sense in Greek. But I'm like, going forward, I always mess it up, and they're like, really? And I'm like, yeah, just because I can't remember. But that's the thing is that's why poetry and song were so important because that's how we would communicate things, right? And you don't even realize, like, think about it. I had an epiphany when I was reading a book, like in my late twenties, when a guy was like, oh, how are you going to break your fast? And I was like break your fat breakfast <laughs> and i was just like oh yeah. 
like you're going like that's that's the dumbest thing in the world but you're going Ta-da! you're like that's that's i had a similar thing with like i do these like work like i do a word of the day with my kids yeah. and yeah yeah uh like lycanthropy was one of them mm-hmm. and i was like okay you know how like underworld rise of the lichens and they're like yeah i'm like wolf and then throat like anthropology right mm-hmm. so wolf man and they're like oh shit like <laughs> um there's so a, a for that yeah. uh take a moment look at yourself and Every morning there's a single tear dripping down my face as I look on in the cracked mirror of regret. Oh, way to bring it down. There you go. (laughs) (laughs) Come up with the second half of that in the comments below. Um, But yeah, uh, no, for real. Like for uh, what is your self-care? Yeah, uh, absolutely. To my listener, to our listeners, either in the comment section or uh, in the, I'll put a little, thing in the spotify whatever Maybe we can do a poll that's exciting yes i do do, do, a, do it yeah. as a poll um whatever. so yeah what if you want to reach out to us uh, at generation dan wherever you find the social social meds um or even on twitter where it is just a plethora a, of whores God. and prostitutes it is amazing it is a dumpster um, fire yeah play that play that on flop radio yeah for real um so yeah do that uh or you can um where can they follow you oh at dino the genetic marvel i am uh finally getting up and running and i am going to start doing things and stuff uh like in like him like ins like hymns there you go it's like science something like that something like that in the movies um, you can follow me at Atlas Novak on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok. All He's that a real stuff. person. Yeah. Or, or you can follow my YouTube channel, The Epileptic Comic. Uh, it's Which mostly just sketches about what it's like to have epilepsy, but there's other stuff. Uh, or if you like the trading card game Cardfight Vanguard, there is uh, Nexus at Night, which is my podcast for that. That's also on YouTube and all that other good stuff. Yep. So thanks everybody for watching, listening, and awesome. uh, self care. What? self-care let us know if you guys want us to do a halloween episode next week too oh yeah because that, that's uh that's like the sunday before halloween right yeah um, do, oh like we should do it in costume right um mm, okay so okay katie and i are um going as uh florence pew and the boyfriend's character from midsummer where like i'm the i'm the guy in the bear suit the bear and then she's uh you know Florence Pugh's character. Do a pod- post the links. Do a podcast. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> so maybe we'll do it in costume. Maybe not. But I'm gonna uh, see if I can find one of my old costumes. I do have yeah. a couple floating around here. I gotta find. Or, or just be be in your costume from the fucking. No, Victoria won't no. let me in the house like that. I have really? to get my. So they will. They're kind enough to get uh, remove our makeup at the end of the night. Ah, okay. So right. then, like, they mostly take it off, but like, so I still have like some, a little bit on my ears. I still got a shower, and I've been walking around with like, uh, because they put makeup on my eyes, and I just like, I'm like, it's like eyeliner or mascara. They're like, it's neither of those things. It's just makeup, and I'm like, I don't know. I'm like, to 